time to play a quick little game, assuming the phone doesn't ring like it always does, and I pulled out D-Day dice. Now, I tend to prefer card games um, over dice games because I have horrible luck rolling dice. However, this is one of the few dice games in my collection because part of the strategy is not just rolling dice, but you also get to manipulate them. And if I, and I at least have a shot if I'm able to sort of fiddle with the results of my roll. So I like this game um, because it is quick to set up, it's quick to play, it doesn't take up your whole table, and it won't take up your whole day. You can play it solo or um, cooperatively. I've never actually played it cooperatively. I've only played solos on this, so um, I'm not sure how the mechanics work for group play, but I am going to show you how to play this game solo. Now, the boards are these little um, thick cardboard uh, rectangles, and it comes with a sort of a tutorial board called Exercise Tiger. And this is a great board to learn on, but it's really simple. Um, there's just not a lot of challenge or strategy. It's more um, mastering mechanics. And I thought, eh, I don't know if this would be so exciting to sit and watch someone play. So I thought I would flip it over and we would do Omaha Beach. And this is the first official um, scenario for this game. And it comes with a couple of these boards. You can also, I believe there are a couple expansions, you can get more, um, more scenario battlefields as well. So let me set this up. It only takes a second and show you how to play D-Day Dice. Right, we picked Omaha Beach. So for setup, you go to your little regulation book and toward the back, there is a section that tells you, for every battle map, how you need to set up the game. All right? And this will give you any special rules for the sectors on the map. We'll get to that. But for setup, what you want to look at is these little columns. And these tell you which cards you should include in that battle map. Okay? So it's going to tell you the regular specialists, the unique specialists, and the special items. And these are all the cards you'll be able to recruit and play with for this battle map. Okay? And then all you do is you go through the deck of cards that you come with. You come with a set of regular specialists and a set of unique specialists. And all I did is picked out the ones as laid out in um, the battle map description put them all together into one big old pile. I like to rank mine by stars. Uh, that's how you recruit them. So I put, uh, I mix, I intermix the regular items and the unique items so that all my low stars are together all the way. Two star, which is sort of a basic uh, unit, all the way up to the nice four star spendy guys. So I just mix them up together in order of cost. And I do the same thing with my items. You have your regular items that you get to play with and according to your battle map you get to add in some special items. Okay? And again, just like my unit, my special units, I like to order them by cost. Alright, so uh, the low unit, the, the low items, this one only costs three, all the way up to the big guns, that'll cost you 20. And this just mean, just makes it easier for me to sort of paw through the deck, as it were. So you set these up next to your map. These are the uh, specialists you can recruit, and these are the items you can also find. All right, I'll show you how to do that. And the last part of setup is you pick your color. We're going to be playing blue only because I think it shows up best on the camera. And you find your starting spot on your map. There'll be a little S right here. You want to set your die to a single chevron. All right. Round one, turn one, level one. Stick that on the S. And underneath it, you'll see a little shadow of army men. And that's how many men you start the scenario with. So for Omaha Beach, they're going to give us 
four units. All right. So you take your little unit tracker and up here, this tracks our units. We're going to tick up to four. One, two, three, four. And that's it. That's all you need to do to set up the game. Simp, simple, fast, you're ready to play. Okay. So what do you need? Well, you need a handful of dice. Um, and they give you this handy dandy little reference card that tells you what the symbols are, what the die results mean, the turn sequence, and most importantly, the one that I refer to the most when playing are the red, white, and blue bonuses. All right. So when you roll your die, you're going to tally up the face value on the die, but you're also looking at the color combos. And if you can roll a red, white, and blue of the same symbol, you'll be able to score a bonus. All right. And these bonuses are the way you succeed at this game. And this is where the dice manipulation comes in. Okay? So, we're set. We're ready to go. Let's get started. Omaha Beach. Here we go. All right. So the first thing let's look at is our map. We need to plan our uh, attack here. The point of D-Day Dice is that you've landed on the beach, oh, whatever your scenario is, here we're Omaha Beach, and we're trying to make it all the way up here and storm the bunker. All right. Along the way, we're going to run into some trouble. There's going to be landmines and machine gun fire and all sorts of goodies we're going to have to survive. And in order to do that, we are going to need two things, units and courage. All right. The board is divided into different sectors. Each sector has its own little shield. We're starting in sector one, and they go up numerically. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in the bunker. Okay. The bunker is, is the last sector. And you'll also notice that each sector is divided into horizontal areas. All right, I don't know if you can see that or not. Here, down here, there's this white line, and it ends with this little badge of courage with one. So for our units to advance from the beach onto the sand, they're going to have to have a courage value of one. To go from this horizontal row to the next one, we need a courage of two, a courage of three, a courage of four, and to make it into the bunker itself, we need a courage of five, okay? Now, we need courage, we also need units. Every sector is also going to have a number in the shield, and that's the defense, how many units you need to expend to hold this area, okay? So when we land on the beach, we're going to need to have three units. Now we start with four, so we're okay for one turn, even if we blow it on the first roll. But every um, round we stay in sector one, we're going to have to deploy three units in defense. All right. If we decide to move to sector two, we're going to need six units. We go to five, it's four, eight is ten. To make it into the bunker, we're going to need a total of 20 units. All right. So this game is about courage and units. But don't get fooled, okay? When I was playing this game, I got really stuck and jammed up. I was so busy looking at units that I forgot about my specialists and my items. And this is where you win the game. It seems a little counterintuitive, but just trust me. And I think maybe as we play it, um, you'll see what I'm talking about, okay? So we're gonna roll some die, some dice. We're gonna generate some courage and some units. Hopefully we're gonna recruit some people and find some items. And we're gonna charge up the beach and into the bunker. That's our plan of attack. Let's make it happen. Okay, here we go. Phase one, roll the dice. For this part, you don't need the little black dice of death, as I like to call it. We'll see this again. We're looking at these six red, white, and blue dice with all the different fun little figures. You'll also need your tracker card, which we've set at four. And you get a total of, if you would like, three rolls, all right? So the first thing we're gonna do Give it a good shake and roll, hopefully in your dice box. Okay, 
Ah, and already this is getting interesting. So here's the rule. After you roll the first time, you must lock two of the dice you rolled. All right. You need to set those aside. You cannot re-roll them again under any circumstance. You must take the results you see. Okay. The rest of the dice, you can keep them or re-roll them. It's your pick. All right. The other four. Two get locked. Four, you have a chance to re-roll. So let's look at what we got. Okay. Already, I see we have a red, white, and blue with skulls. Now, normally, skulls are horrible. What skulls do is they will cancel the result of a dice of your choice. All right? So normally, you don't want these. However, if you roll a red, white, and a blue, you have achieved what is called dead man's gift. Gain 20 item points and ignore the negative effects of these skulls. They don't cancel other dice. So let's take it, man. Why not? 20 item points. I can spend that. So I have to lock two, okay? So I'm gonna lock these two. I can choose to lock any other dice that I want, all right? And I want, not lock, I guess I should say, I can choose to save any other die that I like. I'm gonna save this one. And these three, I get to re-roll, okay? So this is my second roll. Ooh, more skulls. Okay, I don't need any more skulls. So at this point, I could decide to keep the courage if I wanted to. Um, I don't. This is my third and final roll. I'm gonna be stuck with these results, all right? So please, <laughs> no more skulls. Okay, we'll take that. Well, we don't have a choice, we have to. So we're done rolling. We rolled once and we locked two, these guys. And then we could, we could re-roll twice more, okay? And this is our final result. So the first thing you do is you tally the face value of all of your dice. We don't have to tally the skulls because we got a red, white, and blue. We got one star, click, one tool. Now, tools are a little bit tricky. This is where this cool little reference comes in. Under item points, you'll see that if you roll one wrench, you get one item point. All right. If you roll two, you get three item points. If you roll six, you get 48 item points. All right. So it's not a one-to-one -one ratio for these wrenches. So you kind of have to keep that in mind. Okay. So we only rolled one, so we're only going to get one. And the last thing we got were two units, taking us up to six. After you score the face value, then you go in and score any red, white, and blue bonuses. We got Dead Man's Gift. That's going to give us 20 item points, taking us up to 21. That's a good deal. Okay. Now, this is the other place where you can get tricked up. Okay. After you're done with all of these dice, go back to your map and make sure that you maintain and trigger, and rotate, however you want to think about it, your movement dice. So let's do that next. Okay, we're back on our map. And every time my initial reaction is to immediately start to buy stuff because I, I'm just really excited to, to play and move on. And I forget to take care of my movement dice. Okay, and you have to do this now, otherwise things get very confusing later. And the rule is, after you roll, you go to your movement die and you adjust it according to um, whatever sector you're in and whatever the rules are for the board, okay? So we're starting here on our start block. We have a white sector, which means we're going to proceed as normal. And that means adjust your die one tick, all right? We're just going to roll it. So it's now showing two chevrons, okay? This is our timer. This tells us how long we can stay in a section before we're forced to move out, okay? You can stay in a section for one tick, two ticks, three ticks. On the fourth tick, we're gonna see a red arrow. And that's gonna tell us <laughs> no more stalling, we gotta go. Whether or not we want to, we have to 
move out of this sector. Orders have come, <laughs> we're needed elsewhere, okay? So you have to be sure that you're adjusting your movement die to, so that you can keep track of when you can hunker down and gather resources and when you gotta go, okay? So we are at second time in sector one. We're okay, we don't have to move. This is not the movement stage, all right? Don't get that confused. This is only the dice stage, all right? We're still dealing with the dice, okay? We're done with all of our dice. The next thing we're gonna do is recruitment. So, we look at our little ticker. We only have one star, and the cheapest specialists cost two. All right, we're not looking at them. We did, however, get this massive Deadman's gift. So we're gonna be able to pretty much pick whatever we want over here, all right? Now, unfortunately, we can only recruit one item per turn, okay? So even though we have 20 points, we can't take the Lucky Charm and the Walkie Talkie and the Flock Vest. I mean, that would be awesome, but we can't. You're only allowed to take one item and only one specialist in each recruitment round, all right? So my, my two favorite items that I love to have in my pocket are, of course, the two most powerful. The Flamethrower, which will subtract 10 from the Bunker. So when we make it up here, if we make it up here, instead of needing 20 units to survive the bunker, we're only gonna need 10. So that's fabulous. The other one is the Bang, uh, the Bangalore, hmm. Bangalore Torpedo. All right, <laughs> this is great to have in your pocket. It says reduce the defense of your sector, not a bunker, however, to zero. So that means as we're moving up here, if we get stuck in sector nine and we don't have the 15 units it takes to advance, we can deploy our torpedo and it's smooth sailing from there. So let's take the torpedo just for the fun of it. Um, I, I like to have this one because the bunker is great, but if you get stuck somewhere down here and never make it to the bunker, ah, you're sort of out of luck. This guy we can use anywhere on any sector except the bunker. So let's spend our 20 item points and get ourselves a torpedo. All right, I'm gonna pop this down to zero, one. So sad, that's okay, we'll get more. I have every confidence. Okay, so we've recruited everything we can recruit. We're now gonna move, the next phase is the movement phase. And for this, we can we uh, check our little unit die here and it's showing two chevrons. This means we can move if we want. All right, you're not forced to stay here till you see the red arrow. But oh my gosh, don't move unless you have to, okay? Uh, you wanna spend as long as we can in this nice, safe zone. So until we see that red arrow, we're not going anywhere. So we're not gonna move. What we do have to do is a little bit of combat, all right? And for that, we peek down at this little number in this shield. So we need to deploy three troops in order to keep this sector one under our control. Not a problem, because we happen to have six troops. So let's pop this down to three. One, two, three. And the first round of this game is over. It's just rinse and repeat from here on out. We're gonna go back and roll the dice. We're going to recruit some more specialists. We're gonna see if we wanna move, and then we're gonna pay the consequences. All right, let's see what we roll this time. 